Hello, viewers. Super GT here. Just want to say a massive thank you because we hit 500,000 subscribers on this channel. But hopefully, we can get to the big 1 million very soon. But thank you so much. It's a big number. We also got our Team Quadrant 100k um, plaque very recently. Very cool. And it turns out that 158% of you aren't subscribed. So please shut up, Super GT. Get on with the video. Okay, today, daily racing. We're going to jump in. I'm going to do a load of daily race C. Let's begin. Okay, first things first. We have to jump into a little portion of qualifying. Don't fancy starting from the back just yet. Set a couple of laps here. 140.8, 40.4, 39.3. And then settled here with a 39.3. Did have a quick look though at the top times. Always worth doing this, of course. Uh, just to see where they're gaining time. And of course, we're using the the big boy, the McLaren F1 GTR. Absolute beast. But yeah, just had a quick look here just to rehearse and see what is the quick way around this track. All right, we've done a bit of quality. We've got an okay time. But um, into the race, medium soft tyre required. And um, I'm going to go in with the McLaren because it's all I've driven. I don't know if it's the best car for the race, but we'll see. Let's do it. All right. Guess I've just got to move forward from 10th. That's the aim. Okay. Race number one. Let's do it, guys. Starting 10th. So that qualifying time, obviously not quite up to scratch could definitely do better you know if you start in 10th there's very little chance you're going to win in a top level lobby probably not going to happen but as is often the case with me kind of rubbish at qualifying but then do a lot better in the race so let's see if we can actually do that move a little bit forward so i started on mediums makes sense to do that if you are towards the middle of the pack Group up ahead, all getting very comfortable with each other. And I catch right back up as a result of that. So yeah, as I said earlier, you need to use soft and medium in this race. And I'm going into this race without really knowing the strategy. And we just kind of, kind of make it up as we go along and just see what happens, basically. Now, again, more fighting between these guys here. The Hungarian driver gets kind of hung out to dry there. So we just go past him up into ninth not expecting to make up too many positions given that we are on the mediums but I, I mean i don't know maybe these guys are on mediums as well we'll find out i suppose now up behind daco are we going to look for the move no just going to lift off just to let him know that i'm not going to go for this move i do go into the back of him though a bit of early rustiness in this video as we progress up the straight now this track is very much a power orientated circuit so yes of course there's lots of corners but there's lots of acceleration zones and that is why this mclaren f1 is so good because it is very good in a straight line daco covering the inside here into the hairpin so not quite able to go past him and one thing i noticed certainly in the qualifying is that the maximizing track width is is really really important i mean it's, it's important everywhere on every track really but I found it to be especially important around this circuit. So this is a Sardinia C, I, I believe. Now through the final corner. I call that the final corner. It's the final corner that really counts for anything because this one here is flat. And you see the slipstream effect. We're both in the McLaren F1 GTR, same car, but are we able to go around the outside? Kind of, yes, but overshoot it. Go a bit too deep. And... Daco gets back up the inside on the way out. So that first corner is really one that you need to hit the apex on because there's so much camber on the on the apex and it really helps you around. It kind of hooks you in and you go a lot quicker. But uh, that time, not going anywhere near it. So settling for night for now. A couple of laps later, at the end of lap four, a lot of the medium tyre runners went in. So I thought, okay, well, I guess I'll just do the same because I don't know what I'm doing at this point. So we'll just copy everyone else. And now we have six laps to do on the soft tyre. So quite a dodgy pit lane exit. I covered the inside here. Those two guys go easily past. 
and then it's um, it's quite close going into turn one between the guys up in front. Almost tried to get past this Chevrolet. Doesn't quite happen. So a lot of people going for the Chevrolet. Now, of course, remember that it's not always the case that the best qualifying car is the best car in the race. The qualifying is very different because the car has no tire wear. I think it has zero fuel, which is kind of impossible, but that's is a game so they can make that happen I suppose so obviously in the race you have fuel to deal with and you have tire wear to deal with so it's, it's always different um, but the McLaren here very good because as I said it's a power circuit so lots of long straights lots of acceleration zones therefore this car does do quite well and it's down this long main straight that this car really excels it's very hard to overtake this car but it's very good to overtake if you are driving this car uh, so here, not going to pull out just yet because there's no slipstream in front. Oh, now there is. We're going to wait. This is going to get quite interesting because the slipstream effect is so big. It is genuinely OP. Into the first corner, up the inside of the Chevrolet. Aston Martin makes contact with Daco. We're going to go up the inside of him on the way out. And therefore gain two positions up into 11th. Now we started 10th, so there's still progress to be made here. A couple of people still go uh, to go into the pit lane. And at the end of lap number six, it looks like Agnese here, the Swiss driver, is um, on the receiving end of either a mistake or a slam into the barrier, into barrier. I don't know which it was, but either way, he's down here in 10th and he's about to serve a penalty, which is just around this corner. So we're going to gain another position and go back to, well, Actually, a couple of people in the pit lane there. So we are going to go up into eight with uh, Zocker just coming out of the pit lane in front. And you see him going through turn one right now. So, okay, we're making some progress now. As we go on to lap number seven, there's a chance we could perhaps... I mean, fifth place is within sight. It might take a Herculean effort for that to happen, for the fifth place to happen. But sixth place is very much in sight get a sixth and that would be my signature move of course they're coming down the back straight Aston Martin versus Chevrolet into the braking zone it's not quite going to happen here is it oh actually around the outside it, that can happen that, that move there if you can just get the line around the outside get enough of an overlap you can uh, hang it wide get the inside for the next corner Zocker a little bit wide he's on the mediums I'm on the softs now so I've got technically a bit of an advantage here through the corner we do get just ahead and hopefully i'm in the slipstream range of the car ahead and i am just about uh, six tenths behind so let's see the difference here as we whip it forward look how much of a difference that makes by the time we get to the end of the straight i'm down to three tenths or actually a quarter of a second so i gained pretty much four tenths of three there uh, slipstream and the fact that this car is a beast in a straight line um, but a couple of laps later, well, actually, on the next lap, this happened, and it kind of caught me by surprise. And I've raced soccer before. He's a very good guy. So I don't know what the hell happened there. But you can see my reaction. What was that? Obviously, wasn't wasn't the best wasn't best pleased about it. I was kind of looking comfortable there, and I was in the slipstream of the Spaniard, and we were kind of gaining on the guys in front. But now I have been... Um, demoted into this battle for seventh instead around the outside of Zocar and now we're uh, back behind uh, Daco here I'm gonna try and try up the inside he doesn't defend it but uh, I've got the left in my favor here we both go a little bit deep he will have the right in his favor goes in quite narrow and we're gonna have to settle in behind a little bit later on he, he gets actually I was gonna say he gets a bad exit I get a really bad exit and um and Zocker's back alongside can we pull off the outside maneuver he's fully on my left side here is he going to give us a space yes yes he did but i just drove way too wide <laughs> and back down into ninth so this is really just what happens when you get a little bit frustrated and you start driving badly and you just get caught in a battle that you don't really want to be in absolutely full send up the inside first first class signed signed for um, parcel delivery down the inside there didn't quite work yes the parcel got lost in the mail we finished in ninth so quite disappointing actually 
Alrighty, next race. Starting the same sort of position, but I think you know, I finished quite far back. I finished ninth in that last one. I think I, we could definitely do better than that. Top five, if it all goes well. Yeah, so there's definitely potential, I think, here to finish well up the order. It's just the qualifying position is just not anywhere good enough. We will try and prove that later on in this video. So do watch out for that. The, the lap was not too bad that we did eventually set. But we're going to fight here from 11th. I know there's definitely potential if, if everything goes to plan. Um, up ahead, something is not about to go to plan here. They're going three abreast into this single file corner. And it's no surprise that actually the guy on the outside, which happened to be Zocker on this occasion, ends up in the Barry R. Now, big overlap on speed here past the uh, two Lamborghinis. Lamborghini actually very quick in a straight line itself. Just shows you how good this car is with the tow, admittedly. Well, we go around the outside. Can we solidify the position? We eventually do. He's still there, I think. There he is, yeah. Oh, I think he backs out going into this corner, yes. So up into ninth. Once again on the medium tyre by this point. So we're going to maybe go for five and five rather than four and six. I think five laps on the soft is about as much as we want to do. Into the final corner then, catching up once again. Um, final corner, very crucial to the lap, of course, because it leads out onto the longest straight. Fully in the toe now. Look how close this is. It's going to bump him up the straight, in fact. And then we're going to look for the move coming in towards turn one. Don't misjudge your braking zone here. In fact, letting off early. Catfish. <laughs> Completely. Oh, it, I think I swerved last second and it might have just put him off in his mirror maybe. But he just had to go for the suicide into, into the barrier. Unfortunately for him, he sacrificed himself. And he didn't want to take out the guy in front. So, I mean, good on him, I suppose. Now, a couple of laps later... At the end of lap number five, so halfway into the race, uh, because 10 divided by 2 equals 5. We come in and change over to the soft tyre. So now we have half the race to do on the soft tyre. Cover the inside, and it actually worked on this occasion. And we have the Lambigo, uh, Lamborghini, Lambigo, Lamborghini on our right-hand side here. And we are just going to tuck in ahead. So we've been battling with that guy a few times. And then eventually managed to just uh, get the position of ninth but uh, half the race here to go a couple of people left to pit maybe i don't know but in fact one guy uh, zocca in the pit lane where is he going to come out i think he's going to come out behind there he is actually coming out right in front but we are going to get the momentum to go past up into eight by this point in six and i wasn't quite able to really get closer to the top it wasn't too far away. You can see them. Second, uh, sorry, third, fourth, and fifth. Just a couple of seconds ahead, but we had Will Murdoch, who was fighting through from the back of the pack in the Hyundai, properly hustling in the Hyundai. And I was resigned by this point, I think, to fight for sixth place because I think the, the top, sorry, third, fourth, and fifth were quite far ahead with only two laps to go. It was unlikely I was going to catch them. So it was really just a case of working to get this sixth place by this point i thought you know what let's go for it into the hairpin didn't quite get enough of a vote of an overlap which meant that i had to give him the space on the outside and he gets and he just keeps the position just going to back off let him take this single file uh, this kind of section here you don't really want to go side by side at all although i would say that the um the downforce is horrible when you're behind another car you get really bad dirt here into the hairpin then at the end of the lap, the uh, check driver behind having a look up the inside, but not quite going for it. Therefore, we keep seventh. But look at this difference here. As we enter the final lap, I am going to tuck into the toe and do my best to take sixth. Now, look at the speed difference here. Will Murdoch does not have any slipstream ahead, so he's kind of helpless here. And I've got a massive overspeed, probably, I don't know, like 10 miles an hour more at least. Into the braking zone. Don't overcook it. We do a little bit, but get close enough to the apex that we we get around and keep the position. He's very close, though. Now, coming into the next chicane, I didn't block it. Perhaps uh, a big mistake. And he puts up the inside, and I kind of have to respect that he's there. I thought I'd keep the inside for this one, which I do, but it's not enough because he's alongside me. 
and he's going to get the position here. So it's going to be a very close battle here on the final lap because I'm in seventh. Sixth place is there for the taking, but also eighth place is right behind. And I think ninth place is not too far behind either. So we have another, another good opportunity here down the second big straight on the on the circuit. But once again, tuck into the toe, get an overspeed, perhaps try to go for this outside move that he did on me a lap or so ago. Into the corner we go. Is it going to be enough? No, he gets. He managed to get uh, fully ahead before the exit of the corner. They're very close. In fact, ninth place is indeed very close behind. So this could go as good as sixth, as bad as ninth. Well, I say as bad as ninth. You never know. You could end up in the wall upside down and go down to 18th. Could happen. Into the final corner. Overcook it slightly. Perhaps thinking too much about the guys behind. And now I'm potentially potentially vulnerable to getting slipstreamed across the line. I mean, I've had that happen before, but it's not going to happen. Finishing in seven. So a little bit better, I'd say, than uh, than race number one. It's not too bad, actually. Seventh. Gained four positions. It's just really hard if you're starting that far back. I need to, I need to qualify a million times better. Okay, viewers. It's the next day. It's the next morning. It's only, what is it? It's quarter to six in the morning. Let's see if I'm quicker today than I was yesterday. Let's go do it. Okay. I came back the next morning because I got a little bit tired <laughs> and I couldn't be bothered to record anymore. So I'll do it at five, half five in the morning. Why not? Now, I've been bemoaning. Well, uh, I don't know why I couldn't go around that corner properly. I've been bemoaning my lack of qualifying pace. So I thought, right, I need to focus on that. So I, my first lap was actually very close to my PB. By the third lap, I was faster. I went quicker again on the fourth lap. You can see the consistency there. So five laps within a couple of tenths, which is good. That's a good sign. And this is the faster lap. Breaking before the 100 board, staying out on the blue stuff to really extend the entry and getting as close as you can to that curb, preferably grazing it, getting on the power really early by the time you're on the apex. And this, uh, this chicane here, quite tricky to get right. You want to extend the entry here. Breaking just before the gravel. Carry your minimum speed over to the left. You don't have to go fully to the left. But as long as you carry the speed and use the full track width there on the exit. As I said earlier, it's really about maximizing the track. Looking for the second blue board and turning in just before it. Being patient mid-corner. So you might want to lift before getting on the power. Going fully out to the barrier, but not quite onto the grass. There's a bit of grass there just before the barrier. Then you've got a bit of rest here. You're breaking just before... The 100 board pretty much like two minutes before it if, if possible there it is and carry the speed in get on the power early and then again use the full track width this bit here and this little right hander at the bottom of this hill easily flat back over to the left this is quite a blind entry but you want to get fully to the right and commit early to this one i think again full track width at, at this point here i was like one and a half tenths down on my pb but I absolutely nail this corner. Uh, going down into first gear to rotate the car. And then back up into second for acceleration on the exit. And by this point, look, I was actually quicker. So I've gained like near enough two tenths on that final corner. So I know that I could go a lot quicker than this lap that I'm about to finish. But it was a good lap. And it was a, a 38.996 in the end. Uh, so that will hopefully put me in a lot better position going into the upcoming races. You can see my optimum time there was actually a 38.8. So I can go definitely two tenths quicker, I'd say, than what I just did. But we jump into the first race of the second day and I'm on pole position. Mainly not so much because of my lap. I think I would have actually still been on pole even if I didn't improve my lap. Just because, well, it's, it's six in the morning. So I don't think anyone's really playing at this sort of time. Now, I would love to say this race was an amazing race, but to be honest, I, I just pulled away quite quickly and it was kind of a given what the result was going to be. So I can tell you about the tyre strategy because you have to use both medium and soft and they both last. In fact, the softs go off quite quickly and I, I noticed that if you look at the right-hand side, I started this race on soft. I was only quicker for the first or two laps before they began to go off quite quickly. Uh, so I would say you probably just want to do five and five. Uh laps on on each and that'll that'll see you through quite nicely you might be able to extend the uh the soft stint to six maybe if you do soft second 
but ultimately um, five and five is probably going to serve you pretty well for this race now there we go we finally win the race we give it the uh, the old Sebastian Vettel the finger the finger get, gets whipped out look at that beautiful stuff but um, that's the way to do it just just log in at like 6 a.m. if you want to win a race so I think the moral of the story there is log in very early so all the good players are asleep or at work then you can hoover up some wins but now we're going to jump onto ram shadow and try some races from the back so we've joined the lobby here and this guy's pre-race messages don't like how i race go kill yourself i mean okay we'll see we'll see how he races He's starting right behind me. So hopefully that guy's driving won't um, bring me to, well, what he said. We're going to try and pull away as quickly as possible. Now we're on Ram Shadow. My rating is like, it might as well just be ZZ because it's that bad. So we're just going to have a bit of fun with this one and just see what the banter is like in this low level lobby. I mean, this Frenchman breaks really early and then it's kind of, it's just awkward. I didn't even want to go for that move, but he breaks so early and then he didn't break. And I don't, I don't know. Now through here, it, it just all kicks off. I mean, it just kicks off on every corner, basically. The finished driver having trouble on the grass or just likes, just maybe just he prefers the grass. I don't know. You know, the finished drivers are very good off-road. Maybe they don't like the tarmac at all. Uh, this finished driver, this Swiss guy, getting all acquainted through that right hand. Uh, and we go past the both the both of them the pair of them and immediately up into 10th started where was it 15th so just waiting here for the carnage to unfold into this braking zone bmw goes for a nice big punt on the on the mclaren and then we get slammed by the super managing to keep the outside line here on the exit so we do keep this position and now i said earlier this kind of section here you want to go single file but these guys kind of ignore that <laughs> go for your breast and yeah that's that's just inadvisable i would not i would not recommend that at all we managed to get up the inside of one of them then into the next corner he just decides to send it big send i see it coming we go for the cut pack and this is one thing you will learn um in the lower rated lobbies people will just go for a gap even if it is not the right time to do it they are pressing the send button and there's just no two ways about it so just always got to watch out for that i suppose just be ready on the radar as uh, so the bmw and the McLaren once again getting friendly with each other. And we're just going to say goodbye to the pair of them up the inside. Make sure we don't miss our marks like the Russian. <laughs> and you can you can actually hear me laughing there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sometimes you can just go into a corner. You just kind of scare them into breaking too late. And they probably will. Uh, up the outside of this Italian. And again, he breaks really rather late. But you actually managed to keep it under control and keep the position. We're in sixth place by this point. I think we can definitely go quicker. Get a good exit. Cut to see if that guy getting a poor one. And move up into fifth. So now we've got to just catch up with these... Um, what Corvette here. And is it a Peugeot, I think? Now, this is a rather interesting death, I must say. Now, the German... I think this is a good Shadow Realm entry, to be fair. Just watch the, uh, the, the Peugeot. And then all of a sudden, you're not watching the Peugeot because he disappeared into another dimension. Rather interesting. Now, for those of you who are Polish and understand the Polish language, I don't understand Polish, but I did go on Google Translate for this. I knew the first half of that word, or I knew the first word of that name. And um, I apologize for any young Polish viewers. Now, we go past him anyway, and we can say goodbye as we move up into third at the end of lap number two. Now, I was wondering, he was quite strong in his defense against me couple of corners ago I was wondering is he going to go for a strong attack he doesn't actually do it we're okay I managed to catch up with the Hungarian driver here in the Aston Martin at the end of lap number three and go past him now the leader goes into the pit lane and the leader is the driver who very much wanted this race win as we'll see why in just a moment so we come in at the end of lap number five to actually no end of lap number six sorry to change over now move over to the left hand side to cover the inside and make sure the Nissan goes to the outside. He does, but then he comes across in a very strong defense. 
Now this was the first of many strong defenses, and that's putting it that's putting it very mildly. As, as we uh, come up into the next chicane, I I put myself up the inside. I'm not really intending on going for the move. I'm just trying to sort of force him to make a silly mistake, and he doesn't really do it. We get a good exit here, and then I'm going to get get the slipstream. Move over to the right hand side, as he is as well. Very very late. Okay, we're gonna we'll deal with it. Gets a poor exit. Once again, we're going to go for this move. Which side are we going to go? We're going to keep him guessing. He goes to the left. Okay. Well, I'll take the right. And he also wanted the right. Now, physics tell me that two things can't be in the same place at the same time. But he seems really intent that that is not the truth. Now, coming into this uh, hairpin here. Uh, okay. It's like... It's one of those situations where it's like, okay, I'll give you the space. I'm, I could just absolutely ruin him and send him into another dimension but we're not going to do that just yet we're just gonna we're gonna toy with him a little bit and try for the inside here okay he blocks it and then he tries to break test me and he kind of succeeds and then i, I see him come out of the inside we gotta we gotta leave him the space so shameful rammers episode number five billion in operation here now this was the most shameful moment of, of the episode as we come down the straight here and he tries the brake test and completely fails. Now, I don't know if this was an attempt to get, give him space to go for the almighty ram into turn one. So I was very worried about this. Hence why I'm looking behind. It didn't happen. So you explain that brake test to me. I don't know. It, was, it wasn't a good attempt. I tried to troll him here by just letting him catch up and not quite letting him win. But it didn't even matter anyway because he got a, a one minute penalty for not using both correct tire compounds. It's a good fun race to be fair, but uh, all good things must come to an end. All right, everyone, that's enough racing for one day. Well, actually two days took to record this. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Again, thank you for 500,000 subscribers. Pretty darn crazy. Let's go get a million, I guess. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you are new and you did enjoy this video. And uh, I'll see you around next time. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.